I'm Tom Baker, this is Chasing Cars, and today we're out here in the elements in country South Australia, just outside Cooper Pedy, to drive this Holden's new Colorado Z71 Extreme. Over the last six months, we've seen quite a bit of movement at this very premium end of the ute or pickup segment here in Australia. Not that long ago, you and I were in the Flinders Ranges to drive Toyota's equivalent to this car, the Hilux Rugged X. And in the meantime, we've seen Ford take the whole concept to even bigger heights with the Ranger Raptor. Well, now it's Holden's turn, and the route they've gone is quite similar to Toyota's. So they've customized the top spec Colorado, which is called Z71 here in Australia, and they've given it a range of off-roading and capability-focused additions that are fitted right here in Australia to the Colorado. They say there's about 19 grand's worth of extra stuff fitted to this truck, which is a good thing because it costs just $10 less than $70,000, so pretty expensive for a Holden Colorado. But you can easily see what you get. So here around the front, you see this new winch bar with an integrated winch cleverly hidden away under the front license plate there. 30 meter long nylon cord that can handle 10,000 pounds of pressure. That's pretty cool. You also see these big aggressive cutouts here on the front bar, gives you about eight degrees of extra cornering approach angle. Big masculine fender flares here, all-terrain Goodyear Wrangler tires, that's a standard upgrade with the Extreme. You get a bunch of extra black trim around the front, the mirrors and also this hood scoop, that's not functional, just cosmetic. Some of these tubular side steps here, and then around the back, an extended sports bar, a soft tonneau cover, and a big Colorado decal across the tailgate of this thing. So it certainly looks the business, but the question is, is the new Colorado Extreme excellent to drive off-road? Because it really has to be. But let's start first with a look at what life is like inside the cabin of this 70 grand Holden pickup. Nothing has changed in the cabin of the standard Colorado Z71 for the Extreme Special Edition, but I'll still give you a run through of what it is that we like and don't quite like as much about the Colorado. So everything starts quite well in here. When this vehicle was facelifted not too long ago, Holden gave the Colorado a really attractive new dashboard centered around this large touchscreen, which as you can see, comes with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. That's not something that you can get in any Toyota Hilux. Plus this top model, the Extreme, has integrated navigation as well, which is always nice to have. Everything looks right here. It's kind of GM's standard commercial design. I think it looks really nice. You also get a functional dash layout, a little bit of storage on top here, and even a little bit of soft touch paneling that runs the breadth of the dash, so that's quite nice. In front of you is the old Colorado steering wheel. It doesn't look great, but at least the leather is quite soft and it feels pretty good in the hand clear conventional dials in front of you as well. The problem really comes about with the seats, and that's a Colorado problem generally when you get leather seats. The cloth seats in lower end models are actually okay, but these leather seats just feel a little bit vinyl-y and they don't have any under thigh adjustment. So for me, with long legs, I find that I feel that I'm falling forward a bit in this car. I'm sure that's something that most people would get used to. There's also two big cup holders between the seats, a decent sized box here where you'll find one USB port, and a relatively big door bin too. One thing you have to take into account with a lot of dual cab utes is that they can be pretty good up front, but space in the back can be really compromised. Thankfully, that's actually not an issue with the Holden Colorado. Because as you can see, for me, I've got another couple of inches above me of headroom, lots of leg room, and really good tow room sitting behind myself as well. You could easily fit three people across because there's virtually no hump in the floor. And even getting two child seats in isn't that hard because the seat mounts are actually right here, relatively easily exposed in the two outboard seats. The backrest isn't too upright, so as utes go, there's more space and it's a little bit more comfortable than most here in the back of the Colorado. No air vents though, that's not so good to see. So the big question of course is, what's the Extreme like to drive out in the rough stuff? And I say that because Holden have really designed this special edition Colorado for more serious off-roading. This isn't meant to be some super refined on-road special. That's something they might look at developing later on. For now, the Colorado Halo model, the Extreme, is all about out here in some seriously rough stuff. And it's fantastic that we've come out to drive it here around Cooper Pedy and in very, very deep South Australia. 
The first thing you notice driving the Extreme is the changes to the front suspension. So to cope with the additional 150 kilograms of stuff fitted to this car, the bulk of which is heavy weight at the front end, they have beefed up the front suspension with a different spring. And what that means is that you end up with a similar feel to the standard Colorado Z71, but just better body control and recovery from big bumps at the front end. So the Extreme feels a little bit more supple, a little bit better rounded at the front end, and these really big hits that you tend to encounter during faster off-roading like we've done today don't trouble it as much as they do a standard Colorado. You also have slightly different steering feel uh, because of those changes. I actually think the Extreme is just a little bit more adjustable through the steering wheel. The others have quite heavy steering. However, we have got the tires lowered a little bit on this particular vehicle, just by around 15% to better cope with some of the work that we're doing right now. Otherwise, a lot about this vehicle is the same as your standard Colorado, including the 2.8 litre four cylinder turbo diesel engine that produces 147 kilowatts of power and a stout 500 newton meters of torque. This is still one of the better U engines out there. It's a little bit noisy, but you're rewarded with a vast slab of torque that comes on early and pulls pretty hard towards the top end. The six speed auto isn't bad, the tuning's pretty good on that. Economy isn't too bad either. For a day of pretty hard gravel driving, we've managed about 12 litres per 100 k's in the Colorado Z71, a little bit higher in the Extreme. In fact, it's not too loud a car. The Extreme's roof uh, storage does add in a little bit of wind noise. But one thing they've left off is a snorkel to limit the amount of wind disruption that gets into the cabin. Of course, the tyres are different on the Extreme as well. They're Goodyear Wranglers, and they do have that little bit of extra bite driving this thing back to back with a standard Z71 on a 300 kilometer one-way trip, and then all the way back again to Nodata from Cooper Pini. It is definitely possible to tell the difference in the tyres. Within the pantheon of utes, we think the Holden Colorado sits probably toward the bottom of the top third, which is a nice place to be. It doesn't approach the best of the best like the Volkswagen Amarok or even the arch rival, the Ford Ranger Raptor, but it is certainly a better vehicle than a Nissan Navara or a Mitsubishi Triton and definitely the Toyota Hilux. There is an additional level of polish and refinement to the Colorado. The question is really whether the Extreme is worth it, whether you want to spend $70,000 on a Holden Colorado or whether you think by that price point you deserve a bigger engine likely something with a v6 like the amarok which you can get in the early fifty thousand dollar range drive away here in australia that's a consideration you'll have to make personally one last note on the colorado's dynamics the major takeaway about this ute is how deeply you can sense the australian ride and handling input holden spent a lot of time redeveloping the colorado for australia and the good ride quality car like steering feel and adjustable rear end all shine through strongly in fact, the rear end is so adjustable in too high, thanks to the Colorado's LSD, that in some ways, on dirt, this thing reminded me of a modern interpretation of Holden's oversteery rear-wheel drive heritage. Whether we would have expected a pickup to carry that mantle 20 years ago, I think not. So, those are my impressions of the new Holden Colorado Z71 Extreme. It was pretty epic getting to drive this new flagship GM Ute for Australia out here in the red dirt of South Australia, where the extreme makes the most sense. No, this isn't a super polished on-road ute like an Amarok V6 or a Baja Basher like a Ranger Raptor, but it isn't trying to be. Instead, the extreme sets you up with all the gear for one easy drive away price, and for many adventurers, that will be rather useful. The icing on the cake is that this ute is one of the better ones to drive with plenty of torque, good steering, and a decent interior. That said, 70 grand is a lot of cash, and given all the Extreme's parts can be fitted to any other Colorado grade bit by bit, customizing your own vehicle may make more sense. The beauty is that if you want something pre-done, you now have that choice.